Okay. So, okay, the asynchronous student will hate me again because um, I forgot to start the recording. Okay, it's about 20 minutes in. Um, all right, let's back to panel number three. So the luckily we haven't get into the, uh, the key parts of today's lecture yet is how to choose a step size. So while here, the negative gradient is, um, is pointing this way, all right? So it's perpendicular um, to the tangent line, but pointing to where this function is the smallest. So for example, because this direction is here, if we multiply a step size, we can, we can stop here, or we can multiply a bigger size, we can stop here. But if we, um, if we multiply something too big, we may end, we may end up being here and, uh, um, and the function value increases. So what happens is what happens is we have to choose a step size that makes this function uh, decreases. So that, that's how we'll go. So this is panel number six. Um, and the way of choosing this step size is called the steepest descent, is we find the following thing. Um, by the way, uh, this has another name, it's called line search. Is we search on a line. Um, so we choose a step size. So here we have a new notation. Um, this is the arg minimum of alpha that's greater than or equal to zero f of uh, this value. And this is a formula. This is a formula. So, um, and, and let me explain. So, let, so I'll let you guys copy down the formula and uh, I'll explain uh, what does the, the arg minimum mean. So arg mean, so let's say if f Let's say another function g of y uh, achieves achieves its minimum value at let's say y zero. Okay, and then y is the arg minimum of g. Then y zero is the arg minimum of g y. It just uh, it's just a way of uh, it's just a way of denoting the uh, minimizer. And now let's uh, let's read. Let's try to make sense of this formula. What does this mean? Is alpha k is a minimizer at the kth iteration? to this F. So it's like, uh, um, let me use panel number three again. Let's use this picture to illustrate. We, we start out here. 
And we know that this is our negative f's direction at this iteration. So we search on this line such that our function value reaches minimum on this line. So this is the meaning of the steepest descent is we search on this line so that we reach the minimum possible value on this line. Because if we apply the gradient descent at a point well bounded to this line, we, we can't go anywhere else because uh, once we're at this point, the gradient is a vector. So we can't go curved like that. If we search on this line, the minimum value is the, like the step size we wanna choose. Okay, so that's the meaning of that. That's a line search. And let's try to solve. Um, Let's try to solve what is a step size for a certain function. So, right there, we want to find the um, we want to find uh, the arg minimum, or say the minimizer of that. We define we just define a new function. Okay, so at kth iteration, at kth iteration, um, we define a phi of k, but now the variable becomes alpha. We want to find the minimizer, right? Over there. <laughs> alpha is now a variable. It's literally, we define this function. Okay. And we find the critical point of this function. This function is in alpha. This is, uh, the variable is in alpha. So that's a tricky part. So now what happens is we, we, wanna, we wanna find alpha such that uh, phi prime of alpha is zero. We're now, we're now looking at a function in alpha. Alpha is a, this function is a function of step size. If we change alpha, it will change, but we wanna find the, the alpha such that it makes this value minimal. So we take the derivative, we wanna find uh, the critical point and let's take the derivative. And again, chain rule is our friend. Uh, we take the derivative using the chain rule so this is like the inner function. First, we take the outer function, we get the gradient of f. And the gradient of f is evaluated at uh, this point, which is uh, um, xk subtract um, this one. And the dot product with uh, we take derivative of the inner function, which is dd alpha of xk subtract uh, this one.
To simplify our computation, we let uh, a p vector equals the gradient at uh, the kth iterate. Um, because at this point, the gradient is a constant vector, so we just you know, p by it. And then after we make this simplification, uh, we can then see something like the following. That is, um, the gradient of f evaluated at uh, xk subtract alpha p. Okay. Let, let, let's use a p as negative gradient. So we have a plus here. And dot product with, um, if we take derivative of that term with respect to alpha, so we basically, we get negative gradient, which is our P vector. And we want to let this to be zero, okay. And we solve for alpha, we want to solve for alpha. The way to solve alpha in this is we use a Taylor expansion. So Taylor expansion is our friend and uh, we will repeatedly use Taylor expansion like multiple times and we do Taylor So we do Taylor on the gradient. Okay. So so let's suppose, let's suppose gradient of F equals uh, G1, Gn. If we do, so component, let's look at component wise. If we look at G sub I of XK plus alpha P. So where G sub I is partial F partial X I, okay. This is, this is if we do Taylor on that with respect to uh, X K, we'll get this is G I of X K plus the gradient. So we'll use a formula we have derived last time which is the gradient of GI dot product. So at this point, okay. The dot product with, sorry, not at this point, at uh, um, C P, then dot product with P. Um, times alpha. Okay. So this is a formula. So if we think about this, if we think about this, if we think about this part, it is uh, the gradient we can think about this is uh, this is partial x, x, j, but we sum this up. So uh, this is alpha times the summing of j equals one to n of g i. Then evaluate at this point. The dot product so here I use dot, but um, um, here I use dot, but it's not dot product. It's just a regular product with the jth component of P. Okay. So based on this, this is just the ith component and we want to do it for every end component. We will get the following. So I'll directly write down the result. Six five. Uh, nine. 
That is, the gradient of f at this point. If we do Taylor expansion, we'll get the following. This is gradient of f evaluated at xk, and this is p vector. Okay. This is p vector, uh, negative p vector. Okay. Um, plus alpha p. Um, so here is we take derivative of the derivative, we'll get a Hessian. So this is our Hessian matrix evaluated at this point, the multiply with this vector. So this is a matrix, all right? Let's denote this by Q. And uh, so essentially this is alpha is a number, Q is a matrix, P is a vector. So this is matrix times vector. And now we're ready. Uh, we're ready right there. So uh, where is it? Oh, right here, right here, okay. So now we just plug in what happens there um, to this equation. So it is, uh, it is phi prime of alpha phi k is, this is negative p, p vector, and this is uh, plus alpha q p vector. Then dot product with p vector, we get zero. So, and let, let, let me be, cons now let me be consistent with the book so that uh, um, let's denote the inner product or say the dot product as, as something like uh, Y transpose X. So this is, uh, this is a notation the textbook love to use. So let me be consistent with that. Is one vector dot with another, it's like uh, we, we transpose the second vector, we multiply with the first one. So now it becomes, so this becomes P transpose P, but we have a negative and plus alpha times P transpose Q uh, P, and this is zero. So P transpose QP is a number. The inner product is a number. And we will just to get a number. So now what happens is this implies alpha equals P transpose P divided by P transpose Q P. And this is, this, this is our, um, this is the choice of the step size. First, let me say that this is impractical because we have to, uh, later on we will learn uh, it's normally impractical to get information from the Hessian during the gradient descent. Um, but let's still analyze that. Normally we require our function. So um, normally we require functions. So assume um, so assume our Hessian matrix, is a strictly greater than zero um, at any point. Okay, so IE, it's the same thing as saying for any P, 
that's not zero vector, we have P transpose the Hessian matrix. P is strictly greater than zero. Okay. So if we assume that, um, we can see we can see the following thing. That is, we assume. Moreover, we assume the minimum. eigenvalue so because it's positive we learned i forgot maybe two lectures before um if it's positive it means it's minimum eigenvalue i think it's the last lecture but it's minimum eigenvalue is greater than zero okay Um, this is tenth panel. So moreover, um, we can show that for any for any p, if the minimum eigenvalue of this matrix uh, is lambda minimum, then p transpose q p. This will be greater than or equal to lambda minimum p transpose uh, p. So this is good. This is for any P, not just as the eigenvector of the lambda minimum. For the lambda minimum, if P is a eigenvector, it means uh, um, it's equal. But for other vector, this is greater than or equal, uh, or equal. Okay, now let's look at this. By the way, this is positive, okay? Um, what happens is, what happens is, if this is positive, we can divide this thing to the right and without changing this inequality. Same thing for lambda minimum. Lambda minimum is a positive number and uh, um, we can divide it to the left. And we divide this guy to the right. So does the right look familiar? It's alpha. Okay. This tells us a preliminary choice of uh, um, alpha. That is, even though we don't want to solve like the whole, the uh, Hessian, but if we know, if we know its minimum eigenvalue, we can we can choose we can choose alpha such that it's less than uh, its minimum eigenvalue one over it's minimum uh, eigenvalue. Okay, so uh, yes. Okay. Okay, so I don't think I have time to uh, continue on the convergence. So let me just say, okay, so this is a preliminary, this is just a preliminary choice of alpha. So next time, next time, uh, will show the convergence of the gradient descent um, for a, a special type of uh, F. So which I would like to talk about a, a bit about the homework. Um, because we want to show that the minimum of um, this function satisfy 
the minimizer of this function satisfy equation. So the hint I would like to give is, let me just erase here. Uh, the hint I would like to give is uh, uh, we want to rewrite. So let me continue here. We want to rewrite the first one as the sum of i equals 1 to n and j equals 1 to n. So Q is a symmetric matrix. Okay, so Q is symmetric. Uh, it's a symmetric real matrix and with and positive. So uh, it means uh, the first term is positive. Um, it is xi, qij, xj. Okay. This is the first term. And the second term is the sum of uh, i from 1 to n. So bi, xi. And when, when we want to show, when we want to show um, the homework problem, we want to make use of this expression. Okay. So uh, this is f of x1 to xn, and we want to show that partial f of partial xi um, equals zero. So, uh, and then we will come up with a linear system. And we'll show, we'll show that the linear system is nothing but uh, Qx equals B. So this is, this is uh, the hint I would like to give for the homework question, is to make use of this, this expression and then we set the partial derivative uh, equal to zero. So I, again, I want to apologize to the async student. So that's it for today. But uh, uh, again, I will upload uh, the notes so that, uh, um, and actually it's uh, the, the notes should be more detailed than the lecture. So that's it for today. And also thank you for uh, being here.